We are introduced to a tribe of Native American figurines before we fade to a scene of a school day that has just finished. A young boy named Omri has just turned nine today. His mom is taking him home from school to celebrate his birthday. His friends and family are at the dining table singing and giving him gifts. His brother Gillen gives him an old cupboard he found somewhere. Omri is actually quite happy to receive the cupboard. His brother tells him that there is no key. His mom says that she has a lot of keys which she collects as a hobby since she was little. One of those keys might work if they try them. Omri then goes to skate with the board he was given as a gift and takes his best friend Patrick. Patrick gives him a little Native American Indian figure made of plastic as a birthday gift. He tells Omri that the figure had reminded him of Omri. That night, Omri goes through his mom's box of old keys and finds that a gold-colored key with a red ribbon tied to it actually fits the keyhole of his cupboard. His mom tells him that that key was given to her by her grandmother, who while on her deathbed, had given her the key as something to remember her by. She held onto it right until now. It seems that this is what sparked her hobby of collecting keys, for what stories and secrets they may hold. He then looks for an object to lock in the cupboard and settles for the Indian figurine. He reads Stuart Little with his mom before going to bed. Later that night his dad tucks him in. Omri is then momentarily awoken by some faint rustling noise, but he goes to sleep anyway. The next morning he wakes up to hear the same noises coming from the cupboard. He cautiously approaches it and then the key pops out and onto the ground. He picks it up and opens the cupboard to reveal absolutely nothing. The cupboard has eaten the Native American figurine. Oh wait he's just hiding in the corner. He is panicked. Omri tries to finger him but he pricks Omri's finger before he can even try it. He claims Omri is a demon. A giant demon. Omri quickly locks the cupboard as his dad comes in. His dad asks what he's doing. Just cooking cocaine. They rush to get ready for school since they are a bit late today. At school, Omri looks like he's about to pee his pants. He's actually itching to go back home and traumatize the little Indian. When Omri arrives home from school, he is upset to discover that the Indian is a toy and not a man anymore. He locks the cupboard and leaves. He assumes it was all a dream and heads over to dinner. Sad. When he goes to bed, Omri once more hears the tapping noise he heard that morning. He opens the cupboard to find the Indian alive once more. The Indian is again frightened of Omri. He tells Omri about his life and his clan. Omri asks if he was always so little. He tells Omri that he isn't little. Instead Omri is big. Omri asks his name. He says that it's Little Bear. Bear eventually warms up to Omri. Thinking Omri is a great spirit, the peacemaker, in a child's form, as the two begin talking, slowly forming a friendship. Little Bear reveals that he is from the year 1761. He can speak English because the British had taught them, so they can assist in fighting the French during the Indian-French War. Little Bear asks if he can go back home. No, you stay here with me. Omri takes out a toy model of a teepee and puts it in the cupboard transforming it into a real miniature dwelling for Little Bear to stay in, against his will of course. Later that night Omri decides to get a little freaky. He grabs a whole bunch of his toys and puts them in the cupboard. They come to life and begin to duel, before staring at Omri. He then turns them back to toys and stores them away before hiding under the covers. The next morning Bear wakes up Omri and they begin to talk. Omri learns a little more about the Iroquois and he also learns that Bear is a widower. Bear feels the breeze coming in and upon seeing out the window he asks to be taken outside. Omri carefully takes him out into the yard. Bear says that the outside looks like his home, where he comes from. Before taking Bear back in, Omri spots some of his dad's tools and a tray of soil. He thinks that this will be perfect for Bear to use to build a long house to stay inside so he fetches the items, but while he's grabbing them a pigeon attacks Bear. Omri gets Bear inside quickly and notices that he's hurt. He sneaks into his brother's room and steals a model of a First World War British Army medic which he brings to life, named Tommy Atkins to treat Little Bear's wound. Once Tommy is no longer of use, Omri turns him into plastic. Bear requests a hatchet to begin constructing a long house. Omri then fetches a model of a knight. He brings him to life and steals his axe before ripping his soul from him and disposing of his stiff corpse. Omri goes to school later on. In one of his classes, while all the students are sharing stories, Omri talks about how he is fascinated with Indians. No, not you. Shut up. Omri goes into a room where all the class projects are stored. Here we see the tribe of Indian figures from the beginning of the movie. Omri steals the chieftain and rushes back home. He shows Bear the chieftain and Bear asks if he is going to bring him to life. Omri says yes, but only to steal his bow and arrow before killing him. Little Bear watches in excitement as Omri brings the figure to life. Omri takes his bow and arrows, but before he can kill him, he dies. 
Hey look I don't want to go to jail or anything so let's just never talk about this again or I'll squish you. Omri asks Bear what happened in the moments before he took him away and turned him into a little man. Bear says that before he woke up in the cupboard he was guiding his nephew through the woods to teach him how to be a man. But he's probably lost now. Maybe even dead. But who cares I'm just a toy. Omri's dad calls him downstairs. Omri's dad is upset when, after asking Omri where his saw blades went, Omri tells him that he buried them and can't remember where. Omri's dad forgives him, saying that they can just buy another set. But Omri tells his dad that he's a man now and he'll go buy the blades himself. His dad says okay Mr. Big Balls and hands him the money. As Omri leaves the hardware store, a blind kid walks into him. Oh he's not blind he's just a bully. He steals the change Omri had left and runs away. You come back! You don't deserve that hair! Out of nowhere Patrick suddenly appears in the street and shows Omri a plastic cowboy on a horse that can go with the Indian. Patrick's mother is nearby. She notices that Omri is upset, so she and Patrick take Omri home. When Omri enters his room, he sees that both his brothers are observing the longhouse that Bear built. He tells them to leave, but his sister brother Gillen asks why he stole his medic model from his room. Angry, Omri kicks Gillen's rat ball, a plastic ball in which he keeps his pet rat, down the stairs. This gets his brothers to leave. Eventually, Omri reveals his secret to Patrick. However, after they find Little Bear, who had been hiding from Omri's older brothers. Little Bear begs Omri to send him home. I'm sorry you're too small for me to hear what you're saying. Can you speak up? Send me home. What was that? I just want to go home. I think he said he feels at home. Omri's dad calls him downstairs to give him the blades. Before he leaves he tells Patrick not to touch the cupboard. Okay I won't touch it I promise you can trust me I'm your best friend. When Omri gets back Patrick had already brought to life the cowboy and horse models. Before the cowboy dies. Omri grabs him. Omri puts him on the bed before he turns around and kills Patrick. No, he doesn't die but trust me if you watch this movie you'd wish he'd- They find out that the cowboy is a man from 1879 called Boohoo Boone. Patrick leaves Boone with Omri, but asks him to bring the two little men to school the next day. Omri reluctantly agrees. That night Bear tells Omri how sad and alone he is without his wife. The next morning Boone finds out about Little Bear. He and Little Bear are initially hostile toward one another, but are forced to behave themselves. Omri then takes them to school. While inside of his fanny pack the two of them bond over their memories of the rivers and terrain they used to travel along. Bear reveals that his wife died due to smallpox. Omri gives the fanny pack to Patrick while he goes up in front of the class to talk about the volcano he and Patrick made as part of a history project. Their cover is nearly blown when Patrick almost shows Boone and Little Bear to some classmates, and he and Omri begin arguing in the hallway. When Patrick childishly asserts that he could reveal the men and Omri would be powerless to stop him, Omri drives home the point that the time travelers are not living toys that exist for their amusement, but people just like them. As the truth sinks in for Patrick, one of their teachers tries to mediate, and when he realizes that an object in Patrick's fanny pack is the subject of contention, he orders him to open it and show him. Boone and Little Bear pretend to be plastic toys thanks to Omri's hints and laying woodenly in Patrick's hand successfully fool the teacher. Omri then steals a girl model from the tribe of Indian figurines. He plans to force her against her will to be Little Bear's wife. Back home, Omri shows the female Indian figure to Little Bear. He tells him that this will be his wife. Boone asks why he didn't get him one of those. Just as he is about to lock the figure in the cupboard, he and Patrick are puzzled to find the cupboard is missing. Omri realizes that there's only one girl that could have taken it. He bursts into his brother's room and demands to know where the cupboard is. She tells him that she hid it to get back at him for taking her stuff. She, I mean he then tells Omri that it's in the crawl space. When Omri retrieves the cupboard, he discovers that the key is gone. His brother tells him that there was no key when she took it. That night, Omri and Patrick, along with Little Bear and Boone, watch a program on TV that shows a relentless slaughter of Indians by cowboys. Boone is enthusiastic at the sight of his boys killing the helpless Indians while Little Bear watches in horror at the sight of his people being massacred. Upon hearing Boone fire his revolver into the air with delight, Little Bear becomes confused and fires an arrow into Boone's chest. They can't bring back the medic and Bear has no medical supplies to treat Boone's wound. Making matters worse, Omri's mother warns that Omri's brother's pet rat has escaped and is hidden somewhere under the wooden floors. Later that night, Omri and Patrick find the key jammed between two floorboards and accidentally push it down out of sight while trying to retrieve it. Little Bear goes under the floor and manages to return the key to Omri just before he is nearly killed by the pet rat. With the key back, 
Omri brings Tommy Atkins back to life, so he can treat Boone's wounds. While the still unconscious cowboy is being examined, Omri realizes it is time to return Little Bear and Boone to their respective time periods where they belong. Shortly after Omri sends Tommy Atkins back to his own time, Boone awakens and forgives Little Bear. He understands why Bear did what he did and he's sorry for hating his people so much. Later that night, as Patrick sleeps, Omri goes to bring the female Indian to life. But Little Bear realizes what Omri is doing and stops him. Omri says he doesn't want Little Bear to be alone when he goes back. But Little Bear says that the Indian woman probably has people of her own. Maybe even her own family. And forcing her to be with Little Bear would sadden her and in turn, sadden him. Omri agrees not to bring her to life. The next morning, Omri and Patrick say their goodbyes to their little friends. Bear tells Omri of how if he were one of his people he would teach him to be a man like he was doing his nephew. He tells him of how it would be hard for him to be out on his own. But he will learn to protect himself to provide for himself and finally when the seasons change he will return home to meet Little Bear who will accept him as his nephew. Omri visualizes as Little Bear speaks. He sees Bear before him, now Big Bear, accepting him into the tribe as one of his family out in the wilderness. Bear asks Omri what will happen to his people, to his tribe. And having studied the history of the Iroquois and knowing the terrible end that the tribe will face Omri says ah don't worry about it, you're already dead anyway. The film ends with Omri at school reading a journal entry where he assures everyone that although he will never know where or how Little Bear may be, he does not worry about him anymore.